real roughness. Recall from last block AFD2, we study a little bit on material roughness and is essentially the nature of the material to be non, let's say, perfect. Its surface is not perfect, it is not perfectly smooth. Actually, it has many non-uniform surfaces and, well, the more rough the material, the more friction we are going to have. There are plenty of ways to calculate this. This is just a review. You want to go deeper, you need to go to AFD2, which is the block in which I introduce you to material roughness. What I want to, you to show you is the relative roughness, which is the concept we will be using along this course. This is a normalization or a standardization which takes into account the diameter of the pipe. So let's say we have a small pipe and a big pipe. Same material will of course expect more friction here because friction is more near to the center than friction in here. Friction won't be that much of a criteria here. But here it will be very near so we need to account for that. And how do we account for that? We use relative roughness. It's actually easier to compare between each uh, of the pipes because if we have, a, for example, a relative roughness of a pipe of PVC, we can compare it versus a relative roughness of another pipe with another size of steel. So that's awesome, we can compare them. It's very useful, especially for the friction or factor friction calculation. And very important guys, it depends on the diameter, so if we decrease diameter, relative roughness increases, that's not good. If we increase the diameter, your relative roughness decreases and that means friction decreases as well. Mm, just a note, many textbooks or reference books will use the inverse, which is the diameter divided by the, uh, the roughness. I don't like it to use it because it's a huge number and I'm used to use numbers with scientific notation, for example, 5 to the minus 3 power or so on. Okay. So let's compare this is what I was telling you about. When you have a very long space, it's okay. But if you have, a, let's say, very imperfections very near of the center, you expect a higher relative roughness. Same with this, okay. So, I brought you this exercise order according to relative roughness. So, please try to imagine and do it by yourself. Click pause, do it, and hopefully you're done because I'm going to the next slide with the solutions. Well, the least relative rough will be the one which has a high diameter and low roughness, which is clean, of course. Then the second one will be the one with the same high diameter but is a little bit more rough. Then we go directly to the small ones. Of course you want to choose the, the one with less fallings and the most relative rough will be the one with the diameter very small and relative roughness, no, roughness will be high so the relative roughness will be the maximum. Okay, bring you a little bit more. Once again, we don't need to calculate these guys. Everything is already on the textbooks or the booklet or even internet. We just need to find that database or table and search for material, for example, steel, commercial steel. You have this value. Have it actually bigger here. I would recommend you to stop and analyze each of them. For example, copper is very smooth compared to steel. Rusty cast iron is very, let's say, rough compared to new cast iron, of course. And wood, I don't know why. Guys, probably you've been following the course in YouTube. You probably have seen that there are plenty of videos on the mechanical energy, energy velocity to friction, pumps. But eventually you go and check out in the playlist that you don't have the complete material and that's because the complete material is actually in this website, Incompressible Flow Course. 
So what you got here, you got all the theory lessons right here in this tab, course theory. Let's see, for example, the mechanic energy equation. And then you will be able to see how it's structured. For example, the overview of the block. You start with the theory of all these are sections. So for example, let's go and check out why mechanical energy equation is needed. You also got an introduction to this section. You got, for example, also this class, class seven, right here. Uh, you got the description of the class, written description. You got the video, high definition video. And you can also ask any question right here. So for example, what is that in minute seven or whatever your answer is, or question actually. You got recommended problems here. All those problems in block AFD. And it's very important also, we got a content of 15 hours, so that's pretty awesome. If you want to check it, you should register for an account and you will get access to all this material. Would you like to do a pipe of wood, but it's very rough compared to anything that goes here. So let's compare commercial pipe versus wool, uh, wood. Where is it? Now let's actually compare steel versus plastic, which is a very more common one. Steel versus plastic. Which one will cause you a less a pressure drop? Recall that pressure drop depends on the friction, and the friction depends on the relative roughness. More relative roughness, more friction, more friction, more pressure drop. If we want to make the less or the minor pressure drop, we will choose the less rough, for example this one is here, 1.5 and steel is 4.6 so compare it, divide them oops, here so ignore this right here and 1.5 and the other is 5.5 this is literally three times more rough okay, so you will try to avoid the steel, go for the plastic one now let's actually do an exercise on relative roughness. Calculate the one of copper and steel relative roughness in these two cases. The diameter is one inch and the diameter is four inches. First things first, we need to find our material, which is copper. I found the roughness here and steel, I have it here, steel pipe here. So let me take them here. Recall that these are in meters. For copper, the relative roughness is essentially just this one right here divided by the diameter of one inch, which is this in meters. And, well, where is it? This, for the one of four inches, just change this right here. I got this value and this value. Once again, the one with less diameter has the more relative roughness. Do the same for steel. You need to change this and this, and you got these values. So let me see. Oh, we need to do the analysis right here. So as you can see, if you wanted to find the least rough, that means the least friction or the least loss of energy due to friction, choose uh, this one right here, which is 10 to the minus 5, which is the copper and the small diameter. So choose one inch operation and it should be of copper. The worst case scenario in this case will be steel. We have this value very high. Actually this is very high. Here. Very strange. Um, something happened. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Definitely something happened. This should be another. There's an extra zero right here. Actually, this is zero point zero zero four five. So this is the number which has the most relative roughness. So expect high relative roughness. Expect high friction factor. Expect lot of friction loss due to energy. So this was just a very random exercise just to get the idea on relative roughness, roughness and different diameters. Check out the course, go to apply fluid dynamics, 
choose part number one, incompressible flow, and go to the solve problem sections. I got many videos on that. Go and test yourself on the quizzes or read the theory once again in the slideshows. And I have more exercise in the library and newsletter and so on. So keep you posted. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here, the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you're, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.